So there's a small crew, uh, just under a hundred in the what's known as the daily classical arena. I've done plenty of arenas, bullet arenas. Probably the most popular one. Done blitz ones. 960, but never classical. So, I see Queen Master 77 is in there. Will I stream until the tournament ends? I think so. It is a uh, two and a half hour tournament that is uh, just underway here. So, 99 players in this one. Playing in round one versus Super Maths. So, hopefully, Super Maths isn't listening. It's one of the downsides with uh, streaming a classical. There is uh, some time to, oh, I don't know, stream snipe. So we're just going to scoot right on by here and say, aha, I got some space. Hello, chillo maniac. Um, I'm going to go with knight c3. Let's stay away from uh, c4. Yeah, I'm keeping this square open for my knight. Um, let me start with bishop. Now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to insert this check. And then we're going to play here. So what's the point? Maybe that knight's a little bit annoyed at me now. I'm going to play h3. I don't want this bishop to exchange so easily. So we're going to go here. Show the evaluation. <laughs> That's going to be a thing now. Show the evaluation. Let's get castled. Yeah, I have to recall that there isn't an increment. So what's black up to? They're trying to get b5 in. Should I care about that? I care about it now. <laughs> Can I do a recap? Absolutely. There you go. There's your recap. One click. <laughs> All right, so what I might gun for is this and then e5. This is not a threat. I think this is a mistake because black should have maybe gone in for knight b4. How does this knight ever move? It's a good question. All right. Let's just get on with development and enjoy the space. You guys are a fan of that recap. There's the start. There's the there's the end. All right. So now that it's this knight has a new uh, square, I could go in for this, or think about queen d2, bishop h6. I prefer that. And, yeah, let's follow through. Bishop h6 it is. And no, the evaluation would not be allowed. So I'm tempted to do this kind of stuff. Especially with the bishop here, the rook can't escape so easily. Um... At the same time, now that uh, the knight has moved, this might be an idea. So let me sneak that one in there. And maybe the knight jumps it. Yeah, just as I draw the line there. All right, so now I have to worry about this and then that. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, A5, I'm regretting. Yeah. But then again, B5 was lined up. Maybe it was better to just uh, go in with E5. Let's see. If I take with this, pawn takes, then isn't this an issue? I don't want to drop that pawn, nor do I want to drop this pawn. Hmm. All right, we're going to take here. And then take the dark square bishop and then babysit this pawn. I don't have a good way to do that, though. I might have to play here. Okay, now this is a totally different story. Let me start with that. Because I can play c4. That's why I'm saying it's a totally different story. So c4, I think I want to do. Let's get c4 in. This, I play queen e3, and there's two hanging minor pieces. Should probably go here. Queen c3, e5. These are some candidate moves I have. This is this is uh, the main direction black must go in, I think. No, I think I'll... They're not going to try to sacrifice here, are they? Are they? I don't believe it. I have knight to h2 at the end. So one thing I see is that even if the b-file opens up, I have an idea of putting a pawn on b3 and a bishop on c2. And it'd be really tough to get in some uh, into the queenside squares. How many games could you even get in in these classical tournaments? I mean, if everyone goes the distance... 20 minutes per game? It's not so many games. I guess you're guaranteed 7. Not too many. Well, what about E5 right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go e5 with the idea to take with the rook. Why the rook, you might ask? Because I don't want to allow bishop f5. And, yeah, I don't want black to be able to trade more pieces. Also, it throws a punch and prepares to get a new piece involved on e1. I don't need my uh, rook on a1 to cover a5. Well, a5 isn't even attacked anymore. All right, so maybe maybe now this is some kind of sacrifice. But to be honest, I feel like I could uh, do something like e6 and chip away at uh, g6 somehow. I feel like there's a way to attack. In fact, well, this isn't working, trying to trap the knight, because there's a sacrifice and I lose him. Hmm. Play queen c3 and meet bishop takes with e6, but queen c3, knight f4 is a bit annoying. Huh. It's a very interesting move, knight to uh, knight to h5. It's a very interesting move. Suppose I play knight h2, threatening g4. Then now let's try that. Let's do uh, some some prep against possible sacrifices on h3, and now this is on threatening the knight. He's a uh, very limited. He only has four squares being on the edge, but you could forget about these two. So now he's definitely looking to camp out here. This does weaken some light squares, so 
thinking about slipping on in there. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's a pretty strong move. Should I just take and then enter on the 7th? Let me try that. I have queen checks, let's not forget. Maybe I should insert a queen check straight away. Hmm. Or just get to the seventh. I don't have much time. Let's throw a pig in there. See, uh, see what black does about it. Slightly concerned about some disconnect between my rooks if queen to d8. Knight f4, this is a strong piece. Okay. How about I just double for starters? Let's just leave this tension sitting. I don't want to invite the queen forward. I still have a check. And now, now I think black is in trouble. Because this is, this must be a really annoying pin, no? Queen here. Let's start with that and see what they do. Because what's right around the corner is knight here. Imagine knight on f5. Pain, man. He would bring the pain. Hmm. Let's insert a check. Maybe I do something else. Maybe I gun for f5. Okay, I'll go in the b5 pawn. Let's do it. Let's kick him away first. And then win the b pawn. You pawn grabber. And we don't want to give up control of that file, so we get another pig in there. My knight is uh, misplaced. Let's, uh, let's put my rook on the new 7th rank. Tie down the knight. I can kick him away and then pick up d6, but he's going to go here. Let me control the knight. In fact, I'm threatening to now win the knight. I think I'm... I think, uh, yeah, there isn't, there aren't these squares, the backward squares, so I'm taking out two forward squares with the knight. My pawn has the other one, and I'm threatening f3 now. I'm glad I found this move, so yeah, they realize that now. And so I could give him a boot first, control the knight, take d6, pin the knight, keep pressure here, and now improve my knight into e4. Any rook to b8 can be met with rook to b6. Mm, let me just improve my king. Yeah, I have no interest in allowing any activity here. Yeah. And I'll even go as far as uh, allowing a connected pass pawn. Okay, they don't want that. Oh, my rook. Let's pin the knight. And I must have something good here. Um, let's just scoot over with my king. There's no rush with this position. Let's just... Oh. My rook is ready to be trapped, maybe. Let's stop that. No king moves. If the knight moves, I want to be able to do this. And I can do that. This is no longer a threat on c4. Could try to uh, sneak in with my king now. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I could do this move. 
something better? I don't think so. So now at least the rooks are going to come off. At least. I might just be winning some more material. Okay, well, let's make it simple. Trade when you're up material. Babysit upon. Keep the knight under control. And I believe I'll be picking up c5. And now a6, so they're falling like dominoes. I have a lot of passed pawns. Let's improve the knight, or let's call, call it a king. Keep improving. Plenty of time. And now we can get pushing these guys just a little bit. Just a hair. And I think we're good to go. Let's just get the knight back in the ball game. Knight here, knight check, and I win the knight. So this one should be in the bag. And we'll keep it really simple. Trade a little bit more. And push these guys. Maybe we get four queens. Four queens. Four queens attack. A tsunami of pawns. All right, we're going to get that one. Back to tournament land. Okay, let's see who's in first. I, I, actually, I don't care about who's in first. I just want to know how many games some people have in. There's already been three games played. That one went the distance. I have white again. Maybe we could do something, a different opening. E4. I'm getting berserked. I don't want to berserk back. I'm going to use every minute I have here. Try to, at least. Alright. Let's go knight c3. And how about... I'm going to play bishop c4 and d3. I'm, uh... I'm not going to go, I'm not going to declare my king knight just yet. Let's uh, maybe ask the queen a question first. No, let's go queen to e2. I'm going to stay flexible with the bishop. This guy is in pre-move mode. I guess to a certain extent you have to be. Um, well, I don't have to worry about bishop g4 now. That's nice. Let's get this in now. See, uh, see what the queen does. It's a typical retreat. To avoid any discoveries, but my opponent could care less about any discoveries. Uh, this is a pretty good guy. Wouldn't want to see him leave anytime soon. Let's keep him around. He's pointing at f7. On bishop g4, I'm prepared to play f3. I, I'm prepared to maybe even throw a bunch of pawns down on the king's side. I have not committed my king here. Some interesting maneuvers here. Should I just go queen side right now? I'm tempted to go queen side right now. I don't think there's any good knight move just yet. This move would force the queen to go back home. Knight takes, knight, pawn takes is necessary. This pawn is pinned. Whoops. But, uh... Let's, let's just go queen side for starters. As mentioned, I'm I'm fine with this. This is a this gets trapped, so I'm very happy to see these moves because uh, I wa I wanted to expand in this side anyhow. And uh, let's start uh, expanding even further. Space invaders. I always have this. Let's not forget about that move. All right, how about we uh, flush the knight back?
Yeah, this, this cannot be good for black. So if I do this right now, the knight has to go home. Here I could take. I'm giving up this square. Play h6 first. There's so many good options here. What should I do? I don't really mean that. I don't want suggestions in the chat. Yeah, I'm really... I think for these uh, kind of games, it's important that I really just look at the game. I don't want to uh, have any kind of help. Hmm. So, well, I'll just tell you what I'm thinking about here. Got uh, still seven minutes to go. H6, just to put a dent in the kingside structure. G5 forces the knight to go back home. I think I should do this first. Yeah, I mean, come on. I'm moving forward, grabbing some space. I give up one square, so what? This knight has to go back home. Got that covered. That cannot be a good feeling. No way. So now, maybe right around this point I could do something fancy on the d6 square. No? I could force the queen back home if I really wanted to. Knight d5, queen d8, but I don't have a good follow-up after that. I always just develop a new piece. Knight f5 could be, oh, well, I don't know. Oh, I should probably get moving. Uh, let's see. If I need another piece out. Is there any direct uh, way forward here? F4, knight f3? Let's go with that. Could take twice if knight here. Okay, well, how is f7 defended now? I have to run a reverse here. Is now the time for this advance? Let's open it up, man. We got bishop takes pawn with check and all that good stuff. Let's do it. They're really backed up. Quality of pieces. All right, well, at the at minimum, I could take here with check first. See, no reason not to just snap that pawn off. Could also jump in here. I'm hitting the rook. Doesn't have many squares. It's the only safe square, d4, so you'd have to take or play in rook to d4. That looks clumsy. Also, let's not forget rook here. There is a lot, there's a lot of pieces. This pawn is a bit loose. I could play f5. Also opens up some possibilities to get on this diagonal. All right, so that's what he's going for. I'm leaning towards just f5. Let's just do it without too much thought. I have some really well in, uh, entrenched pieces here. So, flight square wise, I'd be looking at a a three, king b one, king a two. I'm looking at more doing the a three move before committing my rook back here. Now that's interesting. Maybe I should uh, maybe I should really go on the offensive here. So I need to take this pawn. Maybe now I should activate the rook. Yeah, let's put that on there. Doesn't allow this knight to move. 
Okay, so queen takes... Holy cow, my queen. She's massive on e6. What is she not hitting? Let's, let's give it a go. Forget about this flight square. F try to enter in this way. Okay, so... My opponent wants a queen exchange. I understand. Hmm. Um, all right, we're going to, we're going to exchange queens. King has to take, and before the rook could get active along the fifth rank, no, call it fourth rank, I'm going to do this. Now he takes pawn drops this guy, so if I could control this knight, I control all the uh, pieces, really. So now, now I'm close to winning the rook. I want to stop rook here. Let's do this. Rook takes pawn, knight c5. King c2, and then bishop here, and the rook is cooked. Let's just step up, and now it's a bit of a predicament for the rook. Okay, so I could uh I could tackle that rook right now. Let's do it. I give him uh I give him up for the knight. I lose this pawn, but who cares? Who cares about that guy? Now my structure alone kills all these pieces. Got all day. Is just bishop here good enough? Bishop here. Take the knight and then take this guy. Alright, the worst thing I could do here is spend too much time. This knight moves, I get the bishop. Alright, they're still in a pickle. Let's just start by putting my bishop on a protected square. Knight here, I have knight takes knight. And then pawn push. So I'm lining up now, just... Uh, I could uh, I could play with my king. I have, uh, I have an extra king in this position. And there he goes, he's trying to wiggle out. Take that guy thou right now and take advantage of the pin. So I, I was helped enormously in this one with uh, all these moves. Uh, a couple of them, okay, they resigned. I was helped a, a real lot, as you saw, with uh, grabbing some kingside space. That really set, set white on their uh, back foot. You know, so there are a lot more people in this one right now. Right around the two hour mark, 339 are in here. All right, so this is my first time playing as black in this tournament. Let's try to play like a machine. All right. A machine would play e5 here. So much for playing like a machine. I'm going to go some, with something a bit more uh, conservative. I like d5, knight f6, and bishop to f5. 
in reply to the fianchetto. And I don't want to be too quick to play uh, c5, knight c6. Okay, that is... Well, it's, I think I've seen this idea before. So. It's interesting. Well, I think I'm going to take towards the center. I must say, I am not used to um, playing these slow games on stream. I'm enjoying it, though. Being able to go slower. All right, we're gonna we're gonna follow the rules here, and the rules say to take towards the center unless you have a good reason not to with the pawns. Now this bishop I kind of see as a potential mender of my kingside structure. If ever challenge, I could back up, and ever capture, I could take. A mender. <laughs> now I could get on the more aggressive side with this. But honestly, I think I'm a fan of still just e6 here. Let's go with e6. I don't have any fear of my bishop being trapped. Okay, maybe they're lining that up now, but still, this move here and then rook a4. Tell you what. I'm going to stop that idea altogether. And this isn't a move that's designed to stop g4, but uh, the additional benefit is this move here. So now, this one pawn restricts two. B, excuse me, g2 is backwards. So one day, when a punch is thrown at this pawn, a piece, one of the white pieces, will have a responsibility to defend. That is a move that I did not consider at all. I guess the idea is take and then pawn takes. I don't want that to happen. I could play bishop to e4. Bishop e4 here takes rook h2, and then I think my bishop's trapped. If I back up f5... Should I allow triple pawns? <laughs> that is quite an interesting move. All right, tell you what, we're gonna back up. Let's see if they go for this. Gonna give me a pawn? I think I might take with the pawn, and on bishop f3, give the pawn right back just to free him up. Okay. Maybe now c5, knight c6. Can also go for f5, as odd as that looks. And then bishop h5. Tell you what, I'm going to do that just to prevent this. And also, before my bishop looks completely ridiculous, I think I play here. Takes, takes, rook takes. There's a knight move with the discovered attack against my rook, but no good knight discoveries. can also play bishop here first. I'm not going to commit my bishop just yet, though. He has a lot of interesting possibilities. No, that's an exaggeration. He doesn't have a lot of interesting possibilities, but maybe I strike at the rook with my queen. All right, so let's see how they recapture. I can see the knight. I could have seen the pawn as well. All right, maybe there isn't really a better diagonal than the main one. Let's get on it. All right, do I play c5 before knight c6 or knight c6 straight away? I think I might want to go with knight c6 straight away and look for a d4 break. I could even consider d4 right now. Let's get knight c6 in. I think I might want to camp out on the queen side with my king. So that's a pretty slow move. Very tempted to play d4. I think d4 is just good here. 
Let's open it up. I do have the bishop. So, yeah. And now I think we could have some mass exchanges, and that's probably what we're going to have. Let's give this knight a boot. He's got to take here now. I'm going to take with the knight first. In a, a, a major piece specific ending, this is also an issue because one day you could see a rook pivot on g3 or just exert pressure against g2. Whereas when you look at my structure, my base points will all be covered. Well, I shouldn't say covered, but f2 or f7 isn't even accessible, let's say. So uh, I guess uh, White wants to figure out, should you take with the knight or the pawn, or going with the pawn? Let's get the pawn back, throwing a punch. My queen would be really, really strong in the center. And now decision time for my bishop. Okay. Hmm. Let's just go with what my instincts tell me right here to observe these two squares. When I play here, I don't want the knight interfering with my rook's view along the G file. I can post up in the center right now. Look to sneak in here. And also prepare queenside castles. Let's do it. Can't stop castling here. I have this. It's a pretty strong post for the queen. A post I, I expect to be challenged soon. It's interesting. Well, I see no delay with playing rook to g8. Uh, well, let, let's maybe get castles in. Am I going to go king side with my king? I think it's okay to commit my king right now. Um. Actually, you know what? I like this move first. In the event of c4, I could go here, and on a queen trade, I could take with my pawn, hit the knight, and then when the knight moves, I take here. I don't get that if queen side castles on this move 20. So I'm under the 5 minute mark, 20 moves in. So I should really look into this, it is the most forcing move. Also, it undermines this point, if the knight has to move. Yeah, this must be right then. I'm happy with my decision to go with rook to g8 over queenside castles. Well, I could pre-move that one. Queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, knight is hit, pawn is hit, <laughs> pawn and knight. Are both hit. Pressure on d4 still. I am on f4, so if uh, the queen doesn't take the queen, queen takes f4. And if the queen blocks, I could take the queen and then take here. Alrighty. Let's see where the knight goes. Also, now that the queens are off, I don't think I want a castle queenside. Mm. I, could, I could go here and camp out in the center. So, okay, well, he definitely has to go. So I'm winning a pawn, and I have the initiative. Kingside castle. Interesting. So rook f4 is a bit irritating. Looking at f5, yeah, f5, I guess I'm going to go into a, I'm going to be a little bit passive here for a move or two. Let's see, rook here, on this move I have king up, and on the double I still have this, it's a little bit tricky. I think it's important to hang on to my h-pawn. Let's go here, maybe I go queenside. And just strike a d4 and... Okay, well... 
Now, not so much. I don't think that that was a good move. I'm going to go here, and I'm threatening now this. Okay, I can improve my king. I could, Oh, I'm winning the rook. e5, I'm winning the house. This rook has no good moves. All of these squares are covered. Those are its only legal moves. They're all covered. And I need only to attack with e5. Am I missing anything? Takes, takes, I get the rook. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm winning a piece now. E5. It was a tough spot, without question, being down upon and you know, the rook is a bit clumsy on f4. I thought really the way forward for white to put some pressure was uh, rook to f1, but I think in the end I could have still neutralized that. Yeah, they resigned. Back to tournament land. So that's game three in the books. How many games do the top guys have in? I don't know how many. How do you play that many games? Six games are in Jack Royal. Man. Uh, so, yeah, definitely slower pace here. All right. We don't want to forfeit. I guess we'll try another. Did I play d4 in the first game? Yeah, I did. All right, let's go with c4. A slob. All right, let's put a knight on f3. See if black goes for pawn takes pawn now. Something a bit more conservative. Hmm. Make a take. Yep, tell you what. I'm not going to go in for some quick strike against b7. That's a little bit surprising, though. I figured e6 straight away to meet captures with this take. And to also guard b4, so there could be some ideas to meet knight b3 with knight c6 and get into a b4. But I may have an opportunity now to take and then play queen to b3. I'm going to go for that. Let's see. Yeah, if this pawn was already here, queen b3, knight c6, queen takes pawn, knight b3, and this is a bit annoying. Having to deal with a knight on c2. Alright, so black, I guess, was fearing something like queen to b3. This would be a much better structure. Instead of working with double isolated pawns, it would be a group of three. Cannot do this right now. Knight takes, bishop takes. Is knight h4 a move? I'm just trying to get an e4. I'm assuming black gets a tempo back with this. Unless the bishop has to go back here. I also have to be on lookout for this. No, not quite. Here I can meet with e4. I could go with g3, bishop g2. Plant my knight in the center and then look forward to e4. <clears throat> Let's give that a go. King side fee and keto. So, I have in mind what my next few moves will be. We'll see what kind of... Oh, I don't know. Let's 
see how black maybe tries to uh, interfere with that or maybe goes black can always take a fairly you know non-confrontational non-confrontational approach to this position just go about some standard moves e6 knight d7 bishop e7 will black try to throw some punches at me with these i think bishop d2 it's a good defense against any of that. If need be, I have queen c1 or rooks to c1. It's follow-up moves. So let's start with this. This may be some idea at some point to then play bishop e4 and neutralize my... Hmm. It's going to say bishop, but I could probably be a bit more descriptive here. This, I think, is my best piece, a bishop on g2. He's masked right now, but he's a super uh, defender of my king side. I won't be coming under under, uh, under any heavy king side attack or anything like that. But he's a very good defender and uh, aggressor. Multi-purpose piece, this bishop on g2. Thank you to the Knight Porter for the subscription. Appreciate the support, Knight Porter. And thank you to the other subscribers in there for that little welcome. All right, so probably just get on with castles. Christopho Zias, thank you for the 19 months in a row. Appreciate the support, Christopho Zias. Christophos. Alright, I still cannot do this. I wonder if instead of castles I should have played here first. I could try to get this in. Yeah, let's give this a go. Th not threatening to win material, but I'm just threatening to do what? I'm threatening to advance my pawn majority. Two versus one, considering the center files. That's, uh, that's something I could have pointed out as early as the recapture on d5. As soon as that was in... That's what we're now working with. So knight takes knight is necessary. Otherwise, I'd be winning material. So next step, now that I have some space. As soon as this knight moves, I could jump in here. So there's a bit of a standoff between the knights. This is sensible to kind of clamp down on the queen side some. I could probably commit my dark square bishop right around here. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Bishop to f4. And this is a bit of a sensitive square, c4, now that I've recaptured like this. These are now four holes on my queen side, so I should take some care over these. I'm expecting this move soon. Maybe I should be prepared to meet that with d5. I kind of like bishop to d6. Uh, queen to a5 is a bit annoying. Queen a4? Hmm. What's the way forward here? I feel like I just want to... I don't know what to do with my bishop. I don't want to put my rook opposite the bishop. I feel like I want to start with a4. Let's start with a4. I'm not looking at this as a move... Again, I'm working with a little bit more space, so kind of want to keep uh, all three minor pieces on. So on this, I could consider bishop d4 and c4. Although that's a pretty annoying piece to kick out of there. Maybe maybe I could try it with this route. I'd have to defend this first. But what do I do on queen a5? Queen a5, queen b3. And then look for knight d2 into c4.
to be a, be aware of this bishop. This bishop is black's best piece. I don't know that he's my best piece anymore. So many ideas. I could try for c4, d5. I may want to uh, get some more pieces involved before I look for that type of opening up of the position. I still have uh, my rook that isn't playing, my bishop, my queen. This square is given up. I'll I'll look a lot more into a knight e5 move. Some tension on that e5 square. There's a battle between the knights over the e5 square right now. Hello to Thur Zoro in the chat. Okay, so I think I still want to move forward with a5. Let's do that. no queen a5, there's no knight to b6, and maybe there's even a6 at some stage. Takes, takes, bishop here can be met with bishop to d2. Knight to f6, knight to e5, and my bishop and rook are there to defend e4. Controlling a lot of squares here, these two pawns. Covering a lot of ground. All right, well, we're right around the blitz mode of this game. Five minutes apiece. Is this the new Hearthstone expansion? Absolutely. You got it. So what's that rook up to? Should I play queen b3? Cover some squares that the rook is eyeing up? I think I like that move. Let's do it. I would fall in love with this move right here, c4. Well, first of all, I'm throwing a punch at b7, but... Assuming that that wasn't a threat to win a pawn here... Releasing pressure against the center is... Not a good option for black in most cases. Alright, so... B6. This really opens up my bishop's possibilities now. Should probably take... I'm assuming if I go here, this will be there. I don't want to give this square up. My pawn does a good job controlling the knight. I guess we could start with the take. I'm on this pawn. Queen takes, I could move the queen out of the way. Go here, hit the knight and the pawn. It's probably not be a good idea, so... I think in the end they'll take with the pawn. Taking with the queen seems like it's a blunder. At least a mistake. They might be close to making a mistake if they haven't concluded yet that pawn takes is best. Knight takes, they're probably not considering, so they're probably considering these two, but again, queen takes, queen a4, hitting the pawn and the knight. That should be a problem for black. Yeah, they might be making mistakes soon. These must be the two moves black is considering right now. Okay, they went with the right one. I could slither on in there. Queen to b5. I can maybe de declare my bishop right now. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Let's let's commit my bishop right now. I think he now knows his place. He's He's cutting into black's position pretty well. Queen to b5, some added pressure, some more added pressure. So these are some follow-up. You know, I have all my pieces playing right now, so a, a next way forward is to see how I could improve these already developed pieces. I haven't forgot about 95. In fact, 
I may be close to playing knight to e5 at some point. Let's see, queen to b5 looks pretty active. Queen to b5, queen to c6. No. Here, they're threatening to take, take, and then bishop takes here. I have to address this. Maybe now is the time I jump into the center. Don't want to trade, though. Hmm. It's a pretty good move. Could play rook to a4. I don't want a rook defending this pawn for forever. Hmm. I could trade. I can initiate the rook exchange and play for d5. That's kind of interesting. Let's go for that. I wanna. I wanna try and make use of the queen's position somehow. Maybe even exploit the bishop who's unprotected. Right around this point, I'm uh, thinking about a, a flight square for my king as well. I don't know if I want to go h4 because this concerns me, so... If the knights are off, maybe h5, but if the knights are still on, h3. I have just a hair of a time advantage. Notice now that there isn't a rook on here, this uh, idea of c4 and the knight c5 isn't on, or if it is, it's going to cost a pawn. Might not be a bad idea. I don't, I don't know. I didn't work out the details. If c5, if c4 isn't played now, I could consider c4. Do I have any loose pieces? Not quite. If my knight moves, this rook is a bit vulnerable, possibly. They're uh, really giving this one a think. Starting with the capture, let's take with the pawn, and now I'm on the bishop. I guess there, huh? So this seems pretty sensible. Hmm, this knight. I could strike at the knight like this. How's my opponent defending that? How's my opponent defend the knight? Hmm. Let's give it a shot. Bishop h3. Do a knight comparison. My knight is slightly better. Both of our knights are vulnerable. But uh, I'm, I'm striking at their knight first. My queen could have uh, a job in defending my knight. Like this, I could consider c4. But on this, I have g4, bishop back, and then g5, hitting the bishop, hitting the knight. They're under the two-minute mark. No idea. What's their bullet rating? All right. Around 18. Okay, I was just pointing this out. On bishop h5, I have this. A bishop back, and then g5. So I'm going to do that. It's super committal. I'm weakening two more squares, two more holes, but now I'm winning some material. Bishop g6, g5, and now I have two threats. Almost a minute, me uh, a minute advantage. Against the king chaser. This uh, felt like it was a, a bit of a Benoni structure. Look at Queen Master 777. He's in sixth place with 15 points. Check that eighth place. Under a minute now. Let's follow through. On bishop here, I believe I could still go with uh, c4. Just have my queen defend the knight. These two threats are not going away. Uh, the reason why I'm going for this is to... Okay, so they're taking someone out. Uh, I, I don't want this bishop to so easily control squares around my king. So knight takes, there's knight f6. I should probably take with the bishop. 
Let's do that. Okay, so this is a pretty weakening move. Mm. All right, let's go. Let's just step up with my king. All right, now we could go here in the knight to g5. Be up a full rook soon. Under 20 seconds for a king chaser. And it's just collapsing right around here now. There's no tricks here. And let's just put my queen on a square around my king. And I could start taking some more stuff. This pawn is pinned. All right, they're down on time. Oh, man, that was a really fast pairing. So as I was pointing out, Queen Master is in at 15. And I'm at 26. I don't know how many points I have. All right, what do I do against... Alejandro, one, two, three, four. Let's stick with C4. Okay, I guess they're going to go for a Benko. A Bononi. Okay, well, I'm going to go for this setup. And Bishop F4. H3. E6. Uh, let's name the squares right. H3, E3. I'm doing this to preserve my bishop. I want to stop B5. Now we get in this. So it's a bit more conservative and a positional approach to have this. It's known as a quark grip. This is a multi-purpose move. Stops this. Oops. That pin also preserves my bishop. I'm also going with the knight here right now because I want to have this in mind in case of bishop F5. So now what? Where do I declare my light square bishop? That's a pretty weakening move. But uh, the knight's looking to camp out there. I, I think bishop to e2 is right. Um, um, bishop e2. Yeah, let's go bishop e2. I want to stay out of like this with tempo. Wow, man, that's some pretty direct play. Look at this. F4. Oh, this guy berserked me as well. That's good. Wonderful. <laughs> I need I need the time to work this one out. So, what's the idea with this? Just cavemanning it? I don't want to take. Let's help out the knight. Looking at E4. If I just castle, then this is going to be a weakness. All right, let's just sneak on by. I may not want to castle too soon in case they try this stuff. Maybe I get the H file. So I'm looking to do some more, uh, take some more steps on the queen side. So maybe I can start with this. Yeah, I want to keep him here for a little bit. Also, if ever this, it drops this pawn. This would be a very nice break to get in. Also, any knight move attacks the knight. Maybe I could look into that. Could start with a5. However, if I do this, knight f6, knight c4, it's a little bit tricky to get this knight involved. It's the only step for him. Also, this is the only square for both of these two pieces. Everything else I have under control. 
Well, let's consider. You know, I'd really like to, if I had enough time here. I feel like there's some very good strategic way forward. Knight d2, knight f6, knight c4. Suppose there's some pressure against d4. I think I could play queen to c2. I think I want to get that reposition in. Let's go for it. He has to move. Pretty sure. Let's get here right now. Knight here. Can take that pawn. Maybe even this is a move. Maybe this is a move soon. Let's see what the queen does. I don't necessarily have to defend if the rook plays there. I don't think. Let's see. Queen c2 was my idea. Um, let's get that move in. They're playing very fast. Alrighty. Now, what about knight here? Isn't that annoying to the rook? What about e5 as a pawn sack? With then d6. This bishop is a little bit stuck. Hmm. If I just babysit the pawn, this is this is gonna be nice, I think. Hmm. Huh. A bit stumped here. <laughs> I'm going to try for this. I was ready to do that. That's probably not a good idea. Alright, I'm also going to do this move. This could be completely wrong. It definitely seems a little bit fishy. Let's see. I, I want to take into account that my bishop needs to uh, get back into the ball game. Okay, so that's uh, kind of happy to see that in a way. So let's get my bishop here. I'm doing this to really take away the e5 square from the pieces, but again, they could have moved that. Maybe they still could do that. So now I feel like I'm much closer to having uh, control over this position. I believe this kicks off with castles. I know my bishop is the dumbest piece around right now, but let's clamp down on any b5. Let's try and stay ahead on the clock. They've been in blitz mode from the beginning, so they'll have no problems uh, adjusting. Let's take... And... Let's take the knight. I guess we're going to do that. And maybe best to go where? 
Hmm. Let's go rook here. Oh, the thing I'm afraid of is this stuff. If they don't do that, I'm not afraid. They have a four versus three on the king side, so that's where, you know. On the queen side, I'm fine. I think I'm better off having the d5 pawn, so... doesn't feel like they're even going for any of that. Hmm. Well... King here? I'm gonna do this. I don't want to go to the h-file, because again, this still concerns me. I have to stay ahead on the clock. Um, I guess we're going to go here. I'll take with the knight. I don't want to give up control of g4. In fact, I want to I wanna at least try to prepare an advance here. I need to get my bishop on g1 as soon as possible. Let's do it. Still have enough coverage for this. Rook here, I could take the pawn. Queen here, on the other hand. Okay, take, I can still take the pawn. Maybe I should be doubling up. They're really gunning for this pawn, so... Maybe instead of bishop g1, rook d2, and then double. It's more accurate. Also on this, bishop to f2. I, can't allow, I cannot allow the knight to sink in there. Oh, rook there is a strong move. I guess that's uh, close to happening. Do I have this move? It's always an in-between your bishop takes bishop, or is there? I think it's d6 right now. Hmm. Don't have much time. Let's go here. Pairing queen b6, knight a4. Oh, there's a check. Should probably get pushing this guy now. Hmm. Counterattack against c5. The time is a big, big factor. Oh, I missed that move. Sneaky. Let's take that rook. Offer a queen exchange. My knight is stupid. Let's get pushing. Playing so fast. Let's go here. Oh, that's such a good move. That bishop's too good. Gotta get rid of that knight. Queen f7. My rook covers f2. Calculating rook takes pawn. It's that move. Right there. Let's just get out of any uh, knight g3 stuff. My knight is back. Uh, he's unpinned. Prepared to go in the corner. Not too thrilled about that, but... Covering this. Oh, that's a welcome sight. It helped my queen out a real lot. Maybe they missed that lateral movement. I don't know. Let's just keep pushing. Even if I lose that pawn, I want some trades. About even on the clock. Maybe h1 was better, I don't know. Got some trades. 
Mm. Can I do this and then knight to d4? Uh, I'm regretting my regretting my decision to play king h2 because of the knight moves with check. Okay, now I could jump in. Queen is opposite my knight. I just want some more trades. My rook is defended, so I'm looking at these squares. 41 seconds each. Hmm. Let's just go here. Let's hit the queen. I want to chase the knight away. He's not going away. It's very tricky. Very tricky. Very, very tricky. Mm. Strong move, man. Strong move. Only nine seconds. What am I doing? Can I even stop that pun? I only have five seconds. Oh! Oh, man. It's just a mate in one. Oh, man. Queen takes G2. Oh. How could I have done better? They stirred up trouble on my king side. I just want a one more piece exchange. Oh, man. All I wanted was one more piece exchange. I know I could have converted that better, but it was tricky in time pressure. Mmm. Ah. My head isn't even in this game yet. I'm still wondering how I could have done better in that one. Still thinking about that game. Well, at the very least, to miss that mate in one at the end, I shouldn't even miss that in a bullet game. Yeah, that was that was tough then to defend because that pawn was ready to come to g two. That you know what? Um, if I can just make one quick uh, note to myself on that one. I should have played king to h1 instead. Of, I know there's many other improvements I could have made in that game. But my decision to go king to h2 instead of h1. I shouldn't have gone to h2 because there's a knight check, a queen check, or a bishop check. My king was far more accessible in h2 than h1. Ugh. Oh. Okay. Try to clear that one out of my head. Yeah, I shouldn't have gone to h2. Again, that's only one little detail, but I should have really been on top of that uh, decision. Yeah, I, I should have been on top of that decision. That should have been a much quicker decision for my king to go to h1 instead of h2. Okay, let's go with a6. Let's back up. So there's only an hour and change left. This tournament flies by. Gotta undermine that structure. Otherwise my bishop doesn't play. Hmm. Queen Master is having a very good tournament. In ninth place. I think Queen Master, Queen Master I know is someone in the chat.
So my opponent is in the think tank. I'm going with d4, so this is allowing me to win a pawn, actually. Because I can take here. Queen is uh, overloaded right now. She has to watch over this pawn, and, well, she's unprotected. So these early plays on the queen side were premature, we can say. My opponent's idea to uh, try and shut down my bishop was... Um, it was dealt with uh, conveniently, let's say, with d6. It just breaks it down, and d6 is desirable anyhow to get my bishop out. So I guess I could take here, and on bishop takes, I could take the knight. Have a pass pawn, but... I have to be a little bit careful. If I take, bishop takes, rook takes, pawn takes, now there's a threat of knight to b5 hitting my rook and picking up c7. Pawn takes, bishop takes, pawn takes knight. The bishop returns here. I could do that, and I'd be up a couple pawns. I'm just, what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to find a very clean approach. Investing some time, clearly, but... I'm just looking for a, a smooth path forward. That's all. Hmm. All right, whatever, we're going to take here. Take the knight or take the bishop? Hmm. Let's take the bishop. So now knight to b5 is a threat. And what I could do is just play knight to c6. Let's do it. I just want to get developed... They they could damage my queenside structure, but they'd have to invest the bishop, and maybe my bishop is uh is able to come back and be annoying to the rook essentially. So if you damage my queen, okay, that I didn't consider because my rook is defended now. So knight b5 or a pawn push, I could take here. So that's a mistake. I'm on this, and I'm I'm winning some more material now. In fact. So maybe they missed that my rook was defended here. I'm not sure. So still have plenty of time with this one. and I have a material edge and a time edge, time uh, po position-wise edge. So this is the easiest move. Could also just advance. Uh, I don't want to allow. If this knight doesn't move, I don't have to worry about the rook. So let's just control the knight. Let's make one defensive move, and now I could think about this next, and he'll be rocked back. Should I do that now? Could also develop. All four knights are competing for these four squares. 
I'm going to go a bit more conservative, get a flight square in, and preserve my bishop's post on e6. So I'm completing development here. Now I'm ready to get rolling with what I have on the queen side. Let's do it. Let's get pushing. Okay, I expected white to try and fight on uh, the d4 square. I can still get rolling with the pawn. See no reason not to. I could still get rolling or I could get here. One rook on the second. All right. Well, I'll gladly take out two knights for a rook. Two minor pieces are plenty. In the threat, b2 with bishop to a4 is the idea. There are many, many approaches right around here. All I want to do is push through with my pass pawn, my b3 pawn. So, let me capture. And I could probably just care less about these guys at this stage. b2, a rook move. Bishop to a2, I already have a flight square for my king. And that should probably do it. It'll be clean enough from there. Just double check. b2, rook d1, I exchange, bishop a2, b2, rook takes pawn, bishop a2. That should do it. Let's keep on pushing. So if you're just joining, where are we at here? I've been running for just two and a half hours. It's a very laid back stream. I think I'll revisit these uh these classical arenas from time to time. Yeah, I like I like to be able to share my thoughts uh live. Uh, a little bit slower. I like being able to do this. Oh, that reminds me. How much of a stream delay? I could definitely make an adjustment with that. So, we'll see. Okay, my opponent resigned. I'm back to tournament land. How many games do I have? I've only played six. Two, two, four, four, zero, two. It just reminded me of like Mike Tyson's punch out. Who knows what I'm talking about? You know, that little code you put in to get to a certain fighter? Maybe Tyson straight away? Okay. We got another one here. Crawl J. Pred Vita. How did I do? All right, knight to f6. And e6. And b6. So now what do we do? Bishop to b4. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Bishop b7, probably. One of these two I'm eyeing up. Let's get, uh, let's ask him a question first. What, what, do you, what do you want to do? You can maintain the pin. How do I get out of this pin? Here, here, and then connect knights. Do I take this knight right now?
Let's do it. B4, there's queen c2, so... Now... I want to take some care over my dark squares, so... Let's go with this move first. No. What? My opponent resigned. What was Jet? Is my opponent watching the stream and he just wanted to see my reaction to that? Alright. Got the W. Yeah! Fear d6, man. Was that the last move I played? It was what I was thinking of, so maybe it was enough just me thinking about d6 that they resigned. They saw d6, and they knew it was all over. Did I even get a point for that? I didn't even get a point for that. Did I get a point for that? Um, I mean like in the tournament standing. Alright, let's try Sicilian. We haven't tried that yet. Alright, I, I have to clear my head here for a second. Look at the tournament. Let's go into... Here's how we do it. Let's see where I'm at. What's this all about? I lost. I won this game. Right? And then... Well, oh, what was my opponent cheating or something? Oh, maybe my opponent was a computer. He got kicked out of the tournament. Is that what was going on? Let me see this once more. It's an engine abuser. An engine abuser. Yes, a computer assistance guy. Shame on you, man. Use your brain. No engines allowed. E6. That's what it must have been. That's what it is. All right, well, that saved me a lot of heartache. There we go. Give him a boot. Get out of here. Take your en engines elsewhere. Use your brain only. Come on now. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts to chess mastery. You gotta use your brain, man. No shortcuts allowed. Alrighty. That's as ranty as I get. That wasn't a rant. I'm just uh, educating. That's all. Just a little education to go around. Some of you m may be tempted to use an engine. Don't do that. And shame on you if you do. <laughs> No one wants to get hit with the shame on you line. That'll scare him away. Knight c6, queen c7, or none of the above. <laughs> well, it should be knight c6. How did I come to that conclusion? Now that a4 is in... It's a little bit more tricky to kick away, kick away a knight on b4. This may factor in. You know? This queen gets excited coming out here at some point. Who knows when play gets uh, a little bit crazy. This could be a sensitive point. Anyhow, I have an eye on b4 is the very brief summary. So where do we go from here? I could deploy my king knight. Knight f6, I shouldn't fear this because of knight g4. could defend once more, but I could add a third attacker and he'll fall. So knight f6 committing the knight right now is fine. Now on castles, I have to be concerned next with e4. Okay, I'm still not concerned about e4 or e5 just yet. Or maybe I am because now the bishop can help out support. So maybe now at this point I play either d6 or, or d5. I think I want to go with d5. Yes. Have enough support for it. And my idea with this, well, the follow-up move 
that I have in mind is to preserve my knight. So we're definitely taking with the pawn for multiple reasons. Now I have a fourth rank pawn versus a third rank pawn in the center. So I'm preferred. I have a better pawn presence in the center. What is that move about? I guess they miscalculated. But my idea was on a bishop move to play h6, bishop e7, and castles. But with this, I'm winning a piece. So they just miscalculated here. I have more attackers than... Yeah, you know, I have more defenders on d5 than they calculated. All right, so they're just going with castles. So what's a convenient way to reply to this? It would be to... What would I normally do if I wasn't in check? Bishop e7. Let's do it. Bishop e7 it is. What is going on? Bishop to g5. Can I castle? Probably could. Or I could play bishop to e6. I like that. Now that there isn't any knight to g5. I'm threatening bishop takes bishop as well. So you can see this as... Uh, a developing moves that gives the most direction to your opponent. So my opponent can't just uh, castle here. But what I normally want to do here is just uh, get my queen involved and develop. So let's do what is convenient. Even though I'm up material, I still want to be uh, on top of things from a time standpoint, from a development standpoint. Uh, there's a question, why am I not number one yet? Well, for one, I had a loss. And number two, even if I didn't have that loss, I think even if I won, I wouldn't even be on the front page. Yeah, I'm a long way off. I could go queenside, but too many gaps, no reason to get into some kind of race in a position. There, there's no need to create imbalances in these position types. This knight is covering my queen. So now this is a threat. So I could just get out of the line of fire. A good way forward is probably off of the e-file and to a spot where I throw a punch. Or at least can be threatening to take this pawn at some stage. And that's the other reason. I need 30 minutes for one game. It's true. So now I have knight to f4. That's a pretty good spot for the knight. Let's improve the knight. Hitting the queen. Hitting the bishop. And what more do I need to do here? Flight square? Um, I think I missed somebody who subscribed... A little bit ago. Andro... Androxoid. Thank you for the sub. And also K. Re. I missed two of them. Thank you both for the resub. Or both for the subscription. If you, Hopefully you're both uh, still here. To hear that. Okay. So, could take the bishop. Um, oh, they're on this pawn here. That's okay. I'm still going to start with this. And what can I do here? Let's not lose on time. All right, let's get a flight square in there. One that doesn't create any holes. Okay. You could go here for a check and then here. Or just knight to e6, covering everything, stopping any entry points. I'm going to go with this. I like my knights. 
And now I'm just going to pile up on the D file, exchange rooks. These are offsetting knights. They're both fighting for these same center squares, e5 and d4. If you're tuned in for the first time, this is this is a very atypical stream. It's the first time I'm doing these this uh, slower time control like this. It's usually much faster. Bullet chess and blitz chess, five minute games instead of uh, these ten minute games, five minute games and one minute games. But this is a nice, um, I'm really uh, having fun here, playing the classical. It is my favorite time control, the, uh, the classical games, as, as much as you see me play the blitz and the bullet. Because I, I, I do feel like I learn a little something with every classical game I play. Right around this point, it doesn't matter so much what rook I put on d8. Now that this pawn is here, he has a responsibility, so I may take him out. Okay. Trading is fine. So this is all very welcome. And now we convert our rook into a two-directional piece. It's not enough to just be on an open file. That next step is to have it function along a rank. That's a full piece right there. Alrighty. And we can probably go pawn hunting right around here. Yeah, let's start with rook here. I'm not concerned with that move. I could play rook to c8 and then take him out and have my knight glue everything together. I'm also paving the way for this, which should really be my focus more than anything. I should be able to uh, stir up some attack here. Converge on f2 in multiple ways. So this is a very... Uh, uh, this rook is going all in on the defensive, we might say. Okay. So just rook to d2 right now. Yeah. Let's see how they deal with the pigs. On f2, if f2 collapses, then there's mating ideas. There's only one piece that could defend f2. Rook f5, but then I start kicking him around. This, here, here. In the end, I have these uh, forking ideas. Let's go in with this first. This is a typical reaction to uh, when your opponent has one of the one of their pieces in a defensive position you look to deflect him so I'm picking up the rook now and we're up a full rook and probably mate soon are we close to mate where's the mate I guess we could start with that should be mate in less than five. And that's mate right there. No, it's not. <laughs> We're almost there. Back to basics. Let's give a check. And king up here. And mate next with f6. There we go. Back to tournament. Got 16. So look at I'm not even on page 2. Forget about page 1. I'm on page 4. I'm in 38th place. These guys in first place. How many? Do they, how many games do they have in there? 
Guy in first place. So one, two, three. Nine games in. How many do I have? Seven. Okay. Um, I played C4 already. Let's play it again. Mm -hmm. Slavaroni. Let's see what we get. You're going to be a pawn grabber? Mm -hmm. This is likely a player that has played this opening a real lot. Hmm. All right, let's jump in to see what the bishop does. You get a little wild. G4, one of these two. Right now, G4. Or just uh, play knight to C3. No. No reason to make this super committal move. I still have an eye on maybe this stuff. Oh. Pawn grabber. I could take here, though. Hmm. -hmm. Knight takes c4. Let's do it. g3, bishop g2. Queen somewhere, e4. G3, bishop, G2 is what I'm looking at. Let's do it. <clears throat> For a moment there, I thought there was queen, D5. Not quite. Got that D5 square covered. Wow. That... Is a pretty committal move, no? Black just created four holes on the queen side. Shouldn't that be punished? Somehow. Well, let's think about moving forward. I don't want to obstruct my e-pawn. I see no reason not to jump in here. I'm going to go here. And then try and get this in. I'll be fine with going f3. I'd rather do without f3, but... If Blackrock wants to insist on queen, d, queen to d5, um, I guess I'll just have to make some concession. Wow. it's a lot of pawn moves, man. A lot of pawn moves. I'm okay with the damage structure. This is now a weak point. These these are all holes in uh in, in Black's camp. Paint them red. They're critical. So why is my opponent not developing, man? Why are they excited about moving pawns? I don't know. This is a serious amount of pawn moves. Someone was saying it earlier. Can you go through the game? One, two. Two bishop moves. Two pawn moves. Three pawn moves. Four, five, six, seven. Seven pawn moves. Seven of the nine moves have been pawn moves. So these are the, these are the games that frustrate you. Or can, you know? When your opponent is violating these principles, if you can't punish it, you feel bad. Maybe that's just me. No. 
I know it's not me. So I can play H3. There. Let's see how my opponent likes it. I can move pawns too. You're not the only one. There we go. He's getting the pieces out. Bishop G2. So there's some irreparable weaknesses here. Let's not forget this. Irreparable. You know, like this guy, for example, is not around to stop knight c5. Let's create some more weaknesses. Let's let's play like my opponent for a little bit. Let's play a4. Wait for him to be kicked. Now there's a new square. And now I'm keying in on c5. And soon there's going to be more pieces converging here. Let's get castled. I could have also jumped right in here first. Hmm. All right. A little bit awkward. I would really like to play a, a bishop move. That's uh, far more aggressive than that, but... Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Another pawn move. Another pawn move. Chop, chop, and then take on d4. One thing you can say, though, is my opponent is playing fast, so... That counts for something. Hmm. I want to get my pawn on e4. On knight c5, there's knight d7. Oh, I don't know. You got bishop f4. Let's try bishop f4. Knight d5, bishop d6. Knight g6, bishop d6. Okay. Alright, Rook. Get playing. Do something. Gotta play faster. Another pawn move. Okay. Let's go here. I don't want to allow knight exchange. All right, man. All right. A little awkward. I'm going to do this, though. I just wanted to make sure I don't drop d4. I'm in a pin. I'm expecting h6. My opponent's... Uh, let's go here. Let's get some faster moves in. 350, call it. Yes. Knight right there. All right. A little bit awkward. 
to do that. Maybe bishop here is better. Don't like how I'm uh, trying to convert this. This I feel like this game should already be over somehow. Like if if this this kind of stuff was played against Stockfish, mm, by move twenty it'd be plus two and a half. Okay. So he's this piece is unprotected. Okay. Let's take that. Might be coming under an attack here. Unbelievable. It may be true. Maybe I should try to get rid of that bishop. Knight h2. Allowing me to take this bishop. Alright. Taking him. Alrighty, knight to e4. Five minute mark. Alright, I'm doing this because I want to be able to kick the knight away. This is uh, black's best piece, and I don't want to take it with my bishop. Take with the rook, hit the a5 pawn. Freeing up e4 for a pawn move, maybe a, a bishop move, maybe a queen. Okay, I could take here. Let's just do it without thinking too much. Let's get this rook in there. See if I can put my opponent on the defensive. To be a bit careful of pulling the rook off of the f-file. So I have these moves, hitting the rook, hitting the pawn. Maybe something, yeah, this with this, and then this. E4, D5 ideas. So just looking to crash through here, I guess. I don't want the A5 pawn. What I would prefer is to crash through on C6. I want some trades. Okay, so rook takes c6, b3, I have queen c4 at minimum. I was ready to take here. Okay, I don't have any time. I got this stuff covered. Still have that stuff covered. Two minutes. PJ Champ plays fast. That is for sure. If the knight moves, I'm looking to crash through on the seventh rank. I'm assuming that this is a player who has gotten away with these kind of pawn advances many times because of how fast it's also been played. But, uh, yeah, as mentioned, plenty of uh, violations. We're just going to make it really simple, I think at least. 
I want it to Queens up. So I'm looking at this and then here. Mm. Uh, on second thought, maybe maybe I should just get this rook off. And now look for queen to c8. Queen can't go too far. Queen takes pawn, queen takes d5. Where's the pawn cover? 122. Get the queens off. Be up a pawn. And go hunting. Let's get the most dangerous pawn. Also cover e3. This is one way that they could undermine my structure on the king side. Here first, then here. This is where there's a lot of uh, stuff to eat. There we go. King here, rook trade. It's the mopping up phase. Pick up some pieces here. Let's take him. Fork. So now they're dropping off one by one. Let's take this guy. And this guy. And let's even go after this one. Have a four versus zero. Okay, he resigned. Back to tournament. Okay, we're at the 28 minute mark. I'm in 30th. I only have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight games in. There, I didn't have to count. I got eight games in. 20 with fire. Yeah. First place is Queen Master. Very good. He's got 35 with fire. He's on a tear. He's been doing a plenty of berserking as well. Go, Queen Master. Take it home. What's up, Jumpy Luff? All right, let's try another E4 game. Berserk the rest of my games? No, I'm going to stick with just playing. Uh, taking my time. So this game will be in and maybe one more. So should we see the uh, Roy Lopez? No, we got d6. Okay. Uh, they're going to go for a gambit. No. What are we following? The uh, opera game here? Is this the uh, opera game? A little Paul Morphy action. I'm not sure of all the de uh, how it all plays out, the uh, opera game. You might be witnessing the op. Is this what my opponent's going for? Are they kind of trolling me here? Now, if I do this, what what's wrong with taking that pawn right now? Queen B4, getting the queens off. Let's develop. That's what Morphe did. Now if here, okay, so that wasn't played. But let's just rip out these pieces here, man. Morphe style. It's the Morphe style attack. Yeah, queen takes, queen here, I went upon, but then there's queen before. I mean, I could have done that, simple. But I'm looking for something more. And I think I got something more. Let's hop on in there. It's a pin. Here, here, here. Queenside Castle. Rapid development. 
Look at what you do. Oh! That's a queen. They missed that I was on the queen. They're playing on. Why? Why is my opponent playing on? No way, man. No way. I was almost ready to play F3. <laughs> no wonder why my opponent's playing on. No wonder. Wow. I nearly dropped my queen back. Let's hang on to her. She's She, she wants to have some fun. Whew. Chop here. Chop there. Recapture. And then mate. Mm-hmm. Let's just take him out. Shoo. Shoo. Get out of here, man. Get out of my house. Alrighty. What you don't want to do is exchange rooks and play here and run into that. But we could start with this. A new square for the king. Yep. And now he's going to be glued in there. Queen's going to slither on in. Maybe. Ah. Uh, were we following the uh, more um, the opera game? Somebody tell me. Let's go here. Looking to break it down. Break it down. All right, let's just uh, put a dent in. You know, let's get rid of any ideas of knight c4 takes. My bishop will be responsible for knight c4. There's nothing fancy here with check here, another check there. It's, it's, it's fine. So let's just break this stuff up. Control the knight, you control the rook. Control the knight, you might control both rooks. That's probably a bit uh, a bit of a broken record when it comes to that, but it's kind of how I view many positions. Identify one piece, like a knight in this position, and if if he can't move, what other pieces can't move? This this rook, I'm not afraid of the rook if the knight can't move. All right, my opponent resigned back to tournament. I got a four. I got 24. Ooh, king in on maybe first page land. If I get another 24, or if I get another 24, if I get another four, that puts me up to 28. Ooh. If I could somehow sneak in two more games, I'll have 34, and maybe, uh, maybe I could get third? Let's give it a go. And Oh, my opponent's berserking me as well. So we're going to have a blitz game here. A little bit of a change up. It's cool with me. So if I win this, I get five. A big five. All right, let's break in the center. Why not? Let's do it. Okay, I can take this pawn now. I got sneaky stuff lined up. I think I've had this once before. This is not a threat. I got a tricky knight. Land a fork. And... Bishop here. I could also take here. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to be sneaky. Let's be sneaky. Oh. Did not see that one. All right, I have queen e7. I don't want queenside castle. I'm bailing out some. Still going to be up a pawn, I think. 
Let's go here and throw a punch at the bishop. I just want to complete development. Um, yeah. Just want to complete development. Knight here, I could drop back. Let's do it. C6 soon. On the bishop and pawn. Hmm. I will take that guy. Here I back up. Okay. Let's go here. Bishop check with, you know, Bishop G5 with check. How about I put that knight here? What am I doing? I'm going a bit astray here with knight to f5. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I could do this. Land a fork. Okay, back to tournament. We got a quick five. I have 29. Ooh. One more five, and I'd be up there at 34 just out of... I'm still going to try it. I'm still going to give this one a go. So my opponent did not berserk me back, so this is a pretty serious time difference. But we're going to give it a go. Kind of have to play in bullet mode here. Let's put the bishop here. Queen to e2. Preparing e4. They don't want any part of that. Let's take here. Take with the pawn. Going with the queenie. Alright. I'm going to jump in here. I want to be able to take this knight, or this continuation, where this is now not a fork. Um, let's go here. Major piece ending specific. I don't know where I want to go with my king. I want to pinpoint this pawn if possible. King side is probably safest. Alrighty. Major piece ending specific. All pawns still on board. Clearly lining up C5. I can win this pawn, no? Queen takes pawn, rook a8, queen b7. Um, I think after f5, my queen is soon to be trapped. That's a poison pawn. No, thank you. Not doing it. Maybe at some point this is a threat, though. I'm prepared to play c6 right now. What about c5? c4. Let's go c4. a4, queen, b5. Or a4, a5. I like a4, queen, b5. a4, queen, b5, queen takes. Should I play g3? My queen is a bit sidelined. I could also think about moving faster. <laughs> We're going to let f4 come in. I want to play queen b5 soon. I guess I should have played g3. 
flight square, stop this all together. You got a couple of weak pawns to do that. All right, let's go here. I'm on the A pawn after a queen exchange. I'm also on this. So if they have to play rook to a8 to babysit the pawn, that's not going to be too good. That can't be too good for black. Four versus three on the king side. I have a lockdown in this. They have to go uh, rook to a8 now. And now I think I just want to break down this uh, lead pawn first. I want to get my king here. If I get my king here, I think I win. Uh, that too, uh, too strong of a point. Let's try this. May need a rook here. I'm preparing f3 right now. Three minute mark. Wow. All right, let's break this up. It's also opening up a new square for my king. One rook exchange. Again, uh, I get in there. My rook is also stopping their king from trying to... Uh, I want to get in here and then get these moves in. So... Now rook exchange, king improvement, king improvement, and now we look for this to dislodge the king post. This rook is tied down. This is active versus passive rook position. There may even be some mating ideas. Not quite. Three versus two still on the uh, king side, so I might be gunning for that. Now I think right now I could transition with my rook. Now that that rook has moved, this is a pretty powerful post, and it hits with check. So that's why I'm going with this instead of c5. I want to get this rook fully mobilized with tempo. So that cannot be right, because I could take here. and just kill any uh, pass pawn first. And now I'm going to be vacuuming up these uh, pawns on the king side. Oh! For a second I thought there was a pawn move with the discovery against my rook. <laughs> Not quite. 225. Let's save this guy. Oh! Why did I do that? They could go here. I'm not playing this well. Well, maybe I don't care if they get my pawn. I want king activity. I should be looking for mate. Oh, they resigned. Back to tournament. I'll take it. Even better. 34. It is possible I could get first somehow. Winning on tie breaks if this guy doesn't win again. If I get one more game with a five, I'd hop into first out of nowhere. They could always time. They could always know a fry. <laughs> they could always know a fry. What's known a fry mean? Wow. What a difference a couple of quick fives will do, huh? All right, let's go for it. Maybe I get top three. Maybe I get first. Who knows? Would this guy resign if he was in a losing position instead of letting the clock burn? We're going to find out. Ah, I played this guy already. This is the guy that I trapped the rook with. Remember he took here? Um, let's stop any idea with uh, g4. Yeah, I played this guy in one of the first couple of games. Yeah, I'm not a fan of berserking, but I guess just these uh, last couple of games it's different. Oh, that move. All right, I'll back up. There's no win of a pawn. Okay, maybe there is. I can move my knight, though. Let's jump in. I might have some mating idea. Oh, I think I'm winning now. I go here anyway. I think I'm winning. This knight is hit twice. Oh. And I'm getting some more material. Now I'm winning everything. 
I'll, I'll take the bishop and then have a discovered check, or not a discovered check, but a check and then win the queen. I think. All right, I'm taking that. Wait a second. What's that move about? Um, I probably shouldn't spend too much time here. All right, let's just run with this. I'm hitting the rook, discoveries. Bishop takes pawn, I scoot over. Okay. So I'm just looking at knight takes rook, knight takes bishop, both with discovered check. Yeah, uh, forget about it. This doesn't work. I take the bishop with check, and then another bishop. I have it right now. And that's a check. And I could play here. And that's simple enough, because queen takes knight, and bishop to d3 check, and I win the queen. Uh, I'm up two pieces here. Queen takes. I'm on the rook, still same story with this move. My knight is indirectly defended. I still have this threat. I don't have to react to that. They're still doing it, though. I'm getting the queen. Maybe they resigned here. They. They did resign back to tournament. I might get another one in. I'm in second. Well, if I win the next one on a berserk, I'm taking first. Eight minutes, eight seconds. I will get another pairing. My opponent could always know a fry, but who? All right, let's see. Let's give it a go. We're going to see. Well, yeah, again, my opponent could uh, just let the clock tick. And the game won't finish. Okay. Typically, you wait to make that uh, capture... You know, you wait for black to capture, or a castle, before making that capture there. So I'm just pinpointing h2. And I might have some quick idea already with bishop takes pawn and then queen h4. This might be a common move to see, but it's uh, faulty. Because I could take and then go in for this. Okay, this is working. Let's see how uh, I could go in for that. Because in the end, after the knight moves, I have queen h1. So knight takes bishop, queen h4. So they have to go for a flight square here. Not winning. I'm winning a pawn with this sequence, not the game. So they're under the nine-minute mark. There's only six minutes on the tournament clock, though. Let us see. They resigned back to tournament? I think I'm taking first. They shouldn't have resigned, though. They had, they had, uh, they had F3 there. I have a five-point lead. I would not have expected that. Let's, might as well berserk it the rest of the way out. This should be the last game. I have a five-point lead. Six-point lead over the guy in uh, third. Wow. I wasn't even shooting for uh, first place. I was just looking to get in some games there. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Got some quick games in there. And let's just ignore that knight for the time being. So, yeah, I could always play e4. Yeah, let's play e4 right now. Huh. 
Okay, so I'm prepared to take with the pawn. Let's kick the knight out right now. And I'm going to go in for a check. And maybe I could even be quite direct with my play. Kicking off with first this capture. And then knight to g5. Yeah, let's let's be very direct here. I think I could give some direction. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen a5. I have to come back to c3. But I'm okay with that, because they have to tend to this point, and I could uh, put some more pressure on it. There is knight c7 to defend here. I may want to come out and give a check first, and then play into g4. All right, so they're going to go in for that first. I got this covered. No, some double attack against my knights. Knight takes pawn, queen d7. Hmm. Huh, knight takes pawn, queen d7. How am I saving my knight? Knight takes pawn, check. Um, I gotta make a move. Knight e6, queen d7, knight takes pawn. And then just castle. Alright, I might be sacrificing a knight. I'll, I'll leave both knights hanging, they'll get to choose which one to take and... I'll try to play on the light square weaknesses. Oh, that I, I didn't expect, because now it's just a free pawn. thought queen d7 was going to win something. Let's just defend. Break the pin. There's no knight takes g7. 337. Three minutes left in the tournament. I'm still up by five. I'm assuming these are updated. Hmm. All right. I should probably think about trapping the queen. On well, the queen, I have uh, these fork ideas. Queen here will allow knight to c7. Yeah, this is the right way forward. A direct play. So, where else does the queen go? Well, she could go here. All right. Um. Yeah, this this seems right. Even if I drop this rook. Three twenty. One minute thirty-eight on the tournament clock. It's hitting with the fork. Queen takes pawn. Oh, you know what? On queen takes pawn, I could just meet this threat against my rook first. That's simple enough. Right here. Parry my opponent's threat, and my threat still lives. One minute fifteen. Tournament clock. All right, they're going to take out uh, my pawn with check. I'm tempted to just castle here, to be honest. No. Let's grab some more material. I'll play king to f1, I guess. I don't want to allow queen takes my... I don't want this uh, pawn to fall. So I'm just looking to rescue my knight, and I'll be up a full rook. And maybe even take the knight first. Yeah, let's take the knight out. More trades. Knight c7 and then queen d5. Queen exchange. 
22 seconds left. Maybe they're considering to capturing my knight. I'm fine with that. Return the bishop here. Here's the threat. Queen to d5. Queen trade. Maybe queen d5 on close to anything. Are they going to resign here? Five seconds? Four? Three? Now that they know the queens are going to be off? No, not quite. Tournament clock is over. Yeah, tournament time, that's it all. And this is a one position, of course. Six minute mark. Maybe they drag this one out. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, for the first two hours of the tournament, I wasn't even thinking about trying to get to first, and then there was an opportunity. With a couple of berserks. I guess we're going to play this one out. I'm on the pawn and the bishop. So let's see what black comes up with here. Um, Let's just kick the bishop away first. I don't like having my opponent's pieces in my position. And let's continue. Let's just uh, flush him away. And then up next, rook takes pawn. Plenty of ways to do it. I just uh, like this approach. One that's going to lead to more exchanges. I think at least. I'll grab that pawn with check. And now I could anchor my knight in here. I have these ideas. I give up this square. Pawn here, rook here, is a mating net. It's the only safe square for the king, so this is what I'm prepping now. Rook to e7 is the mate threat. I have to cover it with the bishop or the rook. Neither. That's mate. Back to tournament, and I took first. Surprise, surprising end, even to be up by five. I figured it would just be maybe by a point or two, or, or tied and win on tie breaks, but much different. Okay. 814 were in this one. 44, 39, 38, top three. Queen Master was just out of podium land. Alejandro, one, two, three, four. The guy who mated me on G2 took fifth. Yeah. Interesting tournament. First, that's for sure. Maybe another one I could uh, check out uh, on stream for another time. But anyhow, let's go through the pages here. Page 2. I saw Tsunami of Pawns in there as well. Coming in... 18th. Let's just zip through all of these pages here. See all the players. I think most are showing up. Slightly cut off that uh, final. That final player. The bottom there. Just cycling through. Yeah, a lot of these are clearly uh, some late, joiner, late joiners. The ones that you're just seeing with uh, three or four games. I'm assuming at least. You know, it's a pretty big turnout, turnout for a tournament, 814. We are almost there. This is something I definitely couldn't do for the marathon tournament, where there were thousands of players in there. Wow, this is a lot of pages to go through. Should I even be going through all of these pages? How many pages? A lot. I always like to go through to see, though. Who's there? We're getting there. Approaching 700 now. And then... I'll do my typical GG's in the chat. Almost there. Thank you, Thurzoro, in the chat for the cheer. 500-bit cheer. Thank you, Thurzoro. Okay, that is everyone. Did I go through fast enough? To the 813 of you. Good games all. Alrighty.